In this video, I'm going to set up a Shopify store to sell low content books. Welcome to my channel, my name is Caroline and today I wanted to start a little case study, a little experiment of sorts. A little while back I did a video all about my KDP account getting accidentally terminated and while I did get it back and Amazon admitted that it had been terminated by mistake, it did get me thinking about how little control we ultimately have over business, a business that we run on KDP or on Amazon at all, no matter how much we try to follow their rules. And I also have talked about perhaps finding some different places where I can sell low content books so that I do have the potential for other streams of income from selling low content books just in case anything were to happen, that would mean we would have to stop selling these kind of books on Amazon on KDP. Plus, I also talked about wanting to have more printing options, um, in particular, some more premium, higher quality printing options, which you currently can't get from Amazon. So for 2022, I have decided to experiment with setting up an online store with Shopify and selling low content books on a standalone online store. So hopefully I will have lots of videos coming up in the future about this, about this little experiment that I'm doing and the process of setting this business up and sharing any progress that I have, if any, fingers crossed I do. And if you do decide to set up your own standalone online store as well at the same time as me, well then hopefully we can go through this together and hopefully we can all see some success with this. So with that being said, first of all, who am I going to be partnering with to create these books? I'm going to be partnering with Lulu. I did a video not too long ago about Lulu and about creating spiral bound books with that platform. And it is a print on demand platform, just like KDP. So you upload your books to their platform and they will only print your books as you sell them. So I like Lulu because they have some really, really great premium options for creating books, which I'm particularly interested in. Plus they do also integrate with Shopify, which means that the whole order process, so the process between a customer ordering a product from my online store and the process of me ordering that through Lulu is all automated. I don't have to do anything manually to process the orders. So you will see all that when I start setting up the Shopify store. So today's video, this video is going to be about that first basic initial setup of the Shopify store. I will be sharing the URL and the name of the store. So you are welcome to go see it and look at it and just see the progress that I'm having with it. And I really do hope that no one goes out there and just blatantly copies what I do. You can still do this with your own original ideas. I'm just sharing it to be really transparent. And it is nice to actually see what someone is doing when they are talking about doing a series of videos on a particular website or an online store. It is nice to actually be able to go and see it and see what they're talking about. Because it is a standalone online store, the competition with each other isn't going to be there like it is with KDP. But that aside, the first step is to choose a domain name or a website address for your online store. Now, I don't spend a lot of time anymore on choosing domain names. I have registered hundreds of domain names over the years. And back in the day, it was important to select something that was SEO friendly, meaning giving you more of a chance to rank higher in Google's search results. But that doesn't really work as well as it used to, plus, there is a real struggle these days to find a domain name that is actually available. So you are probably going to have to get creative when you are trying to register a domain name if you are going to be setting up a Shopify store. So my suggestion here is just don't spend too long trying to come up with a domain name. Try to come up with something really simple, easy to spell, Try not to fill it with hyphens. So if the domain name that you want isn't available, you pop little hyphens between each of the words. That can get really messy. So try to avoid doing that. And try not to get too creative in terms of trying to change around spelling of words and things like that. If the phrase, the word or the phrase that you want isn't available, you still want to make it easy enough for people to be able to spell out without getting confused as to what your actual domain name is. And also try to get a .com domain name if you can. 
There are lots of different extensions available out there at the moment for all sorts of different types of websites, but .com is still the most recognizable and popular type of domain extension. So do try to go for .com if you can. I purchase all my domains from Namecheap. They have really good prices and include free privacy, which means that when someone does a Whois lookup on your domain, they can't see your private information, such as your address and your telephone number. So no matter where you end up getting your domain from, make sure to add privacy if you don't want people to know your private information. Now the domain name I chose was Shop Love caroline.com and do not ask me how I came up with it. Like I say, I didn't put a huge amount of time into thinking about it. Don't often register domain names with my name in it. And I sort of came up with the idea of sort of like at the end of a letter or a note, you write love whoever it's from. So love from Caroline almost. Because I'm going to be creating notebooks and journals and I feel like it's sort of a note writing, letter writing sort of niche. I don't know. And then also because I had the idea of something being created with love by me for my customer. So that's where Love Caroline came from. And of course, that wasn't available. Love Caroline, I mean, wasn't available. So I popped the word shop in front and I was happy with that. Next up, I need to start a Shopify store. As with everything, I would just like to say that this isn't the only way to set up an online store. In the past, I personally have used WooCommerce within a WordPress website to create an online store, but I actually want something that is just super easy, click and play, plug and play type of thing. And also because if any of you do want to follow along, Shopify is the easiest in terms of not needing any kind of technical knowledge to set up the online store. The hosting is all included, so you don't need to be setting up hosting and everything like that too. So that's why I've chosen Shopify and of course because of the Lulu integration with Shopify too. So we're just going to go through the process of setting a Shopify store up in this video. This is basically the main page of the Shopify store. We will be starting a free trial because that's how you start any Shopify store with this platform. To start a Shopify store and to start that 14-day trial of Shopify, you do need an email address. You can get your email address just from Gmail or something like that if you want. Namecheap also do have options to purchase an email account as well. They're very affordable in my opinion. So if you wanted a custom email as in for example my email address is hello at shoplovecaroline.com if you want one of those dedicated type of email addresses then you can just sign up here with Namecheap or any other kind of hosting service provider if you are happy just to have a gmail account you can do that too that's totally up to you so I'm just going to enter in my details here and it's pretty straightforward so we just answer the questions uh, that they ask going through Then we just need to go through and add some personal information and um, probably our payment information will be coming up. So I'm just going to fill that out now. Okay, so that's all we needed to get the 14 day free trial going. We don't actually have to enter any payment information in just yet. Just popping, on, popping in my uh, address, business information, that sort of thing was all I needed. And now we have an active Shopify store. You can see how very quick and simple and easy that was. From there, if you want to wait till the end of the 14 day trial, that is fine. If not, you can select a plan now and we'll just get an idea of the different Shopify plans that are available. So here we have a basic Shopify plan, a Shopify plan and advanced. Now to start with, I will be just going for the basic Shopify plan. I don't need to add staff members, locations and things like that. The biggest difference between the plans are going to be the amount of fees that you pay for the payment processing that gets done through Shopify. So you can see there that on the basic plan payments, you're going to pay a 1.7 5% fee plus 30 cents on domestic, which is your local orders. And then any international orders are going to have a 2.9% with a 30 cent fee. Whereas when you go up to that next plan, 
that $79 a month, your fees reduce less. So you're paying less fees with the amount of orders that you're having. So to start with, the basic plan is going to be sufficient. Yes, you're going to be paying a little bit more in terms of fees, but obviously you're not going to be having as many orders at the beginning. So as the business grows, which hopefully it will, when the amount that you're paying in fees outweighs that monthly cost, that's when you can go up into the next tier of membership where it might save you more money in only paying $79 a month, but having the reduced fees. So hopefully that makes sense. But to start with, I'll just be having that basic Shopify plan until we see how it all goes. Now, if we scroll down here on the dashboard, it has all the things that you sort of need to do to get started. You can go through Shopify's apps to find any kind of dropshipping app apps if that's what you're planning on doing. You can go through and customize your store template add domain, set up payments, things like that. So if we click on add domain, that is what I want to do because I have the custom domain that I want to use. I don't want to be using Shopify's. We want to connect an existing domain. Enter it in. Click next. So to connect your domain, you need to log into your provider's account and change your settings. Follow the provider step-by-step -step instructions to get started. So we click on those instructions and we will look at how to connect to a third party. So the third party is where you have your domain. Now this is the part where it can get a little bit technical, but if you have no clue what any of this means, just contact Namecheap. They will be able to support you through updating these changes if that's where you buy a domain name from. If you've bought it from somewhere like GoDaddy or one of the other places Shopify lists then you can just click autom an automatic connection. I've gone through Namecheap so I just have to update these records manually so basically in my account area for this particular domain name if we look at the instructions it just says we need to change the following records so we need to point an A record to the Shopify address so we head over here to advanced DNS if you just drop this little template down, it actually gives you the option to automatically fill out the Shopify information. So if you just select Shopify, it will automatically fill out the A record and the C name record as per the Shopify instructions. So it's actually quite simple and very easy to do actually. So you don't really need to have any kind of technical info. Just go to your domain, manage your domain, click on advanced DNS and change the DNS template to Shopify and it will pre-fill everything for you. So that was very easy. Now if we head back over here to Shopify, I'm going to verify the connection. It can sometimes take a little while so it might not verify correctly right now but I'll do it anyway if you do the same and it doesn't verify sometimes it can take a little while so don't stress if the connection isn't immediate just keep retrying so although it's saying that it was successfully successfully connected it is saying not connected down here so it can take as it says up to 24 hours for the changes to take effect I will just keep checking on this later on throughout the day and if by this time tomorrow perhaps it hasn't verified then maybe I'll look into it and see if there's an issue or something but as the updates that I did were very straightforward that should verify within the next day. Okay, I just actually did it again literally 30 seconds later and it is now connected. So the connection's verified. My domain, which I purchased, my custom domain, is connected to Shopify. And at this point, if we click on the actual domain name, it just goes to this opening soon page where it's sort of just like a placeholder for the online store waiting for us to set the online store up. And so that's the basic very first initial setup of your Shopify or of my Shopify store. From here, I would be going to look at some themes to see if I wanted to choose a theme for my store. I don't know personally how important themes are in terms of are they going to affect your sales. Personally, I don't think a theme is going to affect whether your store is successful or not. I don't think you're going to make or lose a sale based on your theme as such. I do think a theme can give you some sort of credibility almost or just a more more professional look to your brand and the main thing you want out of a theme is for it to be functional you want to make it so that the customer has no problems with their order process so going from browsing to adding a product to cart to paying for that you do not want there to be any issues you do not want there to be any buttons that they have to click 
extra in order to get to the payment part. The less times a customer needs to click to get through to paying for something, the better because the more times they have to click through something, the more likely they're going to just get sick of it and just leave. So the main things I think that you want with a theme is to make it quick to load, easy to use, good functionality and easy for the customer to get through the order process in order to be able to pay for their products. You have the options of choosing a free theme or a paid theme. So on the Shopify themes website, they have the option of free themes or paid. If you don't have a budget or you do not want to pay for a theme, just go through the free themes and see see what they're like and see what functionality they have, see if they've got the look that you want in a theme. If you do want to purchase a theme, some places that I suggest is Theme Forest. They have a really great selection of affordable Shopify themes. And I think it's probably one of the more popular places to buy Shopify themes from. You can see here that they have reviews and ratings. You can see how many sales they've had. And so you can go through and choose one that suits what you want your store to look like and what kind of functionality you want it to have. Somewhere else that's always good to purchase themes from is Creative Market. We just hop in there and search for Shopify themes you'll see what comes up and you can purchase one from here as well if buying one is something that you want to do so I will probably spend some time looking through some themes choosing a theme and in the next video so next up I'll be working on customizing a theme that I chose for the store creating a brand so things like picking colors of the brand the feeling that I want customers to have when they're on the store, designing a logo and setting up the main basic pages, things like the about page, the contact page, the policy pages, which you have to have. They are built in. There are some built in ones to Shopify. Policy pages, I mean, things like needing to have shipping policy, a returns policy, just terms and conditions on using your website and any sort of policies you want to have in place for customers when they do actually purchase from you. And if there's any kind of problems, how you want to handle them and things like that. So that's going to be all in the next video. If you are going to be setting up a Shopify store too, please let me know down in the comments. And if you would like to share the URL of your store if you feel comfortable doing that please do that because I would love to go and see your progress if you are going to be following along with this case study if you did like this video and you are excited for this upcoming series please let me know by giving the video a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video